This is it. We've been to space, we've been to orbit. Today we go for the prize. We find out who wins the moon race. Who will achieve the impossible? Who will stretch the limits of the human mind, reach our planet's natural set? What? Oh, that. Luna 1, a Soviet probe, did fly by the moon in 1959, two years before Gagarin's flight. But that's not what I meant. Who will stretch the limits of ingenuity to launch the first human-made object to hit another celestial body? Who will be first to land on the... What? Fine. Luna 2, another Soviet probe, did hit the moon that same year. But that's not what I meant. Who will be first to land people on the moon on a ship named Apollo and say things like, small step for man? Aha. My name is Sylvain Neuvel, and this is Space Race 101. If the Earth were a basketball, the moon would be roughly the size of a tennis ball. But where would it be? Here? 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 Well, the moon is roughly 385,000 kilometers from Earth. On this scale, it would put it a good 24 feet away, 7 meters, somewhere across the street. You can go now. We're going to need a rocket to get there. So far, we've seen Goddard's rocket, the V2, the R7 Signorca, the Juno, and the Mercury Atlas. It won't come as a surprise when I say that none of them will do. Now, the moon's quite far, but if you remember, I said we could probably cut down on propellant if we made the rocket lighter or use better fuel. Well, there's a third option I forgot to mention. Just to say f*** it and make the rocket bigger. Get ready to meet the Saturn V. Oh yeah, I told you it was big. Now let's see if I can fit it on screen. Nope. Nope. Alright, let's pretend this fits. On July 16, 1969, the Apollo 11 Saturn V takes off from Cape Canaveral. Two minutes and 42 seconds later, the first stage shuts off after burning 2 million liters of propellant. The first stage will fall back to Earth and end up somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. About 30 seconds later, the second stage ignites. By then, there's no turning back, so the escape tower jettisons. The second stage will burn through another 1.3 million liters of propellant before shutting down six minutes later. The second stage will also fall back to Earth and end up in the old... The third stage burns for a couple of minutes before it stops. By then, we've gone through, I don't know, 2.5 million liters of propellant. Guess where we are? We're in Earth orbit about 200 kilometers from the surface. The ship will make one and a half rotation around the Earth before it starts another burn for about five minutes on its way to the Moon at a whopping 10.4 kilometers per second. That's 23,000 miles an hour. All right, this is the cool part. A little over four hours into the mission, the command module, this one is called Columbia, this thing here, separates. Put it down for a sec. This part here will magically disappear. Then the command module will come in, do a 180, and extract the lunar lander from the third stage that is now empty. Cool. Some Apollo mission had the third stage crash into the moon, but this one flew right past and is now orbiting the sun somewhere. So we're now three days in and our combined ship will fly behind the moon, out of contact with Earth, then it will fire its engine to enter lunar orbit. It will go around the moon like 30 times. After going in circles for about a day, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong go inside the lunar lander. Then it separates and it does a little dance so that Michael Collins, who's still in there, can examine the lander for damage. Then they begin their descent. That takes maybe 15 minutes. You can watch the whole thing online, it's really fun. So they're on the moon and they do their thing. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. They're only outside for a couple hours, but they spent almost a full day on the moon, including a nice seven hours of sleep. The lander fires its engines, and a few minutes later, they're back in orbit around the moon. 
It takes them about three hours to catch up to the command module. Then Armstrong and Aldrin get back in, and a few hours later they get rid of the lander. It will orbit the moon for a little while, and eventually crash in the Sea of Tranquility. No, not that kind of sea. Columbia fires its one engine to escape the moon's gravity and set a course to Earth. Then they're in there for maybe two days. Uh, until the command module separates, enters heat shield position. And about five minutes before landing, the parachute deploys, sending the whole crew splashing somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. And this is it! Thank you so much for watching! If enough people like these, I might do some more uh, before the next book comes out. There's a lot of cool stuff happening after the moon landing. Until then, my name is Sylvain Neuvel, and this was fun!